Hey guys, this is Theta again. I'm now doing a tutorial. Ah. No, it's bad, it's bad. Hey guys, this is Theta. I'm doing a tutorial here on how to do rendering setups and uh one more time, one more time. Hey guys, this is Theta. I'm gonna do a tutorial today on how to do render setups. Uh, this is the kind of stuff you see when you get a download for a model and there's a type of images for it. Um, so it's pretty easy to do. Um, it's a little maybe, I'd say actually an uh, intermediate or not advanced, but intermediate level um, difficulty here. So um, this is going to go from all scratch all the way to having all your images and a template for everything. So what we're going to first do is we need, I'm, I'm going to use Charizard for this also. Um, we're going to need a pose though. Um, so what I like to do is I'm going to make a new model animation. We'll just call this Zard Pose, and I'll export this to the desktop. And I can delete it inside Brawlbox. What this does is it makes it so I have a savable pose that I can open up on a model and instantly pose them. And so we're going to pose Charizard now, real quick. We're going to load up that Zard Pose though and click it so that it's selected. Now if I hit B, I can see the bones. Um, so I'll just you know pose Charizard, I guess. Usually I like having them to a slant. Or, you know, an angle. Um, it's just, again, this is just freeform stuff. And this, you know, yeah, a good place to also get a starting, uh, you know, it's like a start point is to look at their animation files. Um, because those usually are animated pretty well, and you can grab some poses. I guess I'm going to do like a little claw type of thing. I don't know. Um, so I'm probably fast forward through this so I got so I can you know make the pose easier. All right, cool. So we have a little Zard pose here again, just as an example. Um, and so it's saved. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do copy down here. What this is, it copies every single bone uh, transformation. And I'm going to pose it on him. So now once I've unclicked this, it's basically back onto his model. And if we click paste, he's now posed just like he was in here. So if we exit out of this, it's going to give us a warning. And we're going to click yes, because it means it will save this pose into here. So now anytime I open up a Charizard, it's going to instantly be posed onto this if I take if I click that. And I can copy all those transformations so that it will look like this. And so once I've got that, I'm going to export it onto a folder. I just call them render... Sorry, I just call it render and then whatever the name is, doesn't really matter. Um, export them to there. And then you're going to right click the texture data and export all into the same folder. So now I'm going to open up 3ds Max and we're going to get a scene here. I'm going to import, let's, um, yeah, let's import uh, to, where is it? Renders are, there we go. So import this. And now you're gonna see it's messed up, and the reason for that is that every time all those transformations I did, it pretty much did them twice. So I get rid of all these bones, you will be posed normally. Um, another thing to note is that we don't need these extra, the this final smash eyes. And so now we've got him set up here. We need to fix his materials though. So I'm gonna click M, and I'm gonna use a little eyedropper here to select his body. Now his body isn't reflective at all, so I'm gonna take this 100 down to zero, and it will get rid of his reflections. Kind of uh, by default, they usually have a little sheen to them. So now I'm going to go, this is a little where it gets a little more advanced. You're going to need to do some material work here. Um, so IL is not reflective, obviously, but we're going to have to set up the multi layer textures. So and what we're going to do for that is we're going to cut this, we're going to go click this little box, and it will go maps. We'll do standard. We're going to use a composite map. Um, and now for the first layer of this texture, we're going to get to render Zard again and click that white part of his eye. And we're going to click this channel thing. Actually, is it channel one? Huh. Let me check real quick just to be sure. The easy way to check which uh, they have different UV maps, which is basically how textures are laid out. Um, and you can see what number it is right here. So if I click on his white, that is using the fourth one. Two, three, four. 
cool. And then it's not using any alpha, so we do that. And we're also going to click the com you know com the uh, complicated uh, material. So now if I go back here and make a new uh, layer, we're going to click this. And we're going to add on his eye. And the channel for that is obviously going to be different. It's going to be on the third one. It does not tile. It doesn't have any alpha. And so now if we take this into here and do it as a copy, let's make it so it only shows up where the eye is. And so we can do image alpha, alpha, and then alpha as gray. And it makes it so it only shows up right where that one eye is. And if uh, if it doesn't look like it's doing it right right here, um, just a quick thing, this doesn't tile either, my bad. So now if it doesn't look right in here, it's because it's just in the viewport. If I click render here, it should actually um, show up right. So you can see there, it looks fine. Um, so after that, we need to add the shine. So we're going to add this, um, the shine here. You can see here, it is in the second one. None of that. Uh, none, no alpha. Let's see. And then copy this again to here. Uh, and then do image alpha, alpha, alpha is gray. And again, if you want to keep checking what it looks like, just to be sure, you hit this little render button and then bam, it shows up fine. Um, and then we're not going to have him blinking inside here, so we don't need to do that. Um, but now what we need to do is we're going to right click this, copy it. Uh, and then we're going to eyedropper on his other eye because they're two different materials. Let me get rid of that reflection. And we do right click and uh, paste as a copy. Um, so now you can see uh, it should look fine if I do this. Yeah, yeah. So uh, they both look fine and they're not moving at all. If you wanted to actually move his eye a little bit to like the you know, left or right. Oh, wait, hold on. This is what I have to do. Make that look complicated. There we go. Um, so if you wanted to actually like move his eye texture a little bit, what you'd have to do is, let's see uh, if I have front. Say I want to have his, this eye looking a little bit to the right, or you know, like towards the back of his eye. I'd click this, the offset is where it does. So if I move this a little bit to the, if I do 0 0.5, you need to do this for the mask too. If it has alpha on top of it, it's so like the eye, you know, is a solid texture. So you need to move both of them over. So if I render this though, it's a... Uh, not doing it very much. Hold on, let me check. Huh. Oh wait, that's that's my bad actually. It's the other eye that I just edited. So now, yeah, for yeah, put that zoom on it. So now yeah, you can see if I since I moved it over, it's looking backward. Um, usually the little shine here you should have following it too. So, but I don't need it to be looking backwards, so um, let me get rid of those numbers. Flip this and this. Cool. All right, so that's um, that's as far as the material goes for the eye. Uh, now we need to set up some lights. So, quick thing, what you're going to want to do is go into the, your render setup. Uh, you're going to want to have the area to render be a blow-up like this. Um, the width and height, you can decide what the resolution of it is, is by yourself. I'm going to do 1280 by 720. And I give it a little bit of room, just like that. And once that's all good, you're also going to want to change your renderer real quick. So go to renderer or excuse me, go to common, and at the very bottom it says assign renderer, change default scanline renderer to mental ray, and that will make it have a little bit nicer uh, lighting, stuff like that. Uh, this should all be fine now. Uh, so yeah, and then what I'm going to do here is, this should work, I'm going to just test real quick, I'm going to go into create, and then I'm going to create a camera, create, um, to create, Cameras. Oh, you're gonna need to go into perspective, my bad. So click P if you're not in perspective mode, and then create camera from view. 
And then once you do this, if you set this to perspective, you can then move around and you, you can edit the stuff all you want to. What I usually do is I um, set up the model in a different thing and then import them into this render area. But if I go back to here and I do camera 01, it will go back to that default view I had there. So that's good. Um, that's all set up like that. Now what I need to do is make some um, lights here. So let's create some lights. I'm going to go into standard lights, create a skylight real quick. Um, and I'll put this like there or something. And then make this, I'm going to put this at 0, 0, 0. Go a little bit above it because it is a skylight after all. And uh, I'll actually add a little bit of an angle towards the camera. Um, and then let's make a target light real quick. A targeted spotlight. And I'll do it from here, looking at the Charizard. So I'll set the target of this to be at 0, 0, 0. Um, and then the spotlight itself is actually going to be... Yeah, actually, I'll move this a bit here. All it really is from now on is um, making a custom lighting setup. So there's not really much to do. It's kind of personal to what preferences are for lighting. Up a little bit. So there's that, and then I'm going to want to go into the settings, obviously, for this light. Um, uh, let's see here, spotlight one, there we go. Um, shadows, I wouldn't suggest turning on shadows for um, a lot of lights. They don't really uh, need them. They do want ambient occlusion, though. Um, let's make sure we have that real quick. Inside, render, it's no processing, maybe. It's in one of these things. Um, visual, no. Global illumination. You want to enable the final gather also. We'll go over those settings later. Um, for general time purposes, I wouldn't recommend having uh, global illumination on. Uh, it's not 100% needed. Then, okay, in, render, in renderer, you're going to want to have classic ray traced as your option. Otherwise, it will turn on all spotty. Um, then afterward, you're going to want to disable and enable refractions because you don't need them. Um, shadows, use, yes, of course. You don't need depth of field. Those are all fine. Yeah, those are fine. No processing, maybe? The settings will be in there somewhere. Um, you're going to want to look for, let's check in the skylight actually real quick. So click skylight. Um, that's fine actually. Okay, so back to the spotlight. <laughs> decay should be inverse square. So you can get some nice decay for that going. Um, the spotlight settings, that's fine. Fast effects. That's fine. Shadow parameters. Light effect shadow color. Shadow map, we don't need a shadow map. Atmospherics and effects are not needed either. That's fine. Um, so let's check actually really quick how this looks. If I go to cameras, camera 01, and actually I'll change the setting on this really quick to be, let's say, Fine. See how dark that looks. That's too dark, yeah. Let's do one. So back to one. Nice. It will show us the lighting for a quick preview. Um, and if I do render here, it'll do a little render and it does some nice quality. You can adjust the quality settings here. I usually have um, this set to final gather should be set to either normal or high. Um, and then all these other settings are just your own preferences, really. Um, so you do that, and once this is done rendering, we'll render two Charizard colors, 
And then once the Charizard colors are done rendering, I'll make a quick template for them so you can see how I do that. Um, and once that's done, you, that's pretty much all you really need to know on how to do this type of thing with rendering and stuff like that. So I'm going to go to so it's the desktop as pose one, in case you do multiple poses, that's why I have that. Um, pose one, uh, render norm.png. And these are my settings 48 bit RGB, alpha channel, etc. So that's good. And now what's cool is if you go and you get another Charizard real quick. So I'll go to documents. Brawl Files, Fighter, Pokey Lizard on. So if I go to, let's say, his red color, whatever, this is just the Brawl red color. Um, let's actually get the. There's a white one, I think. Check. Oh, this one's fine. Okay, so export all. We do, as long as it's the same model, you can export all into the same folder, and it will change how it looks inside the uh, rendering area. So you can see it's now the green Charizard from Brawl. Um, so if I render this again, now we got a green Charizard. Um, so that's pretty simple to do. Um, as far as changing colors goes, when you change models and stuff, and it gets a little, a little bit more, you pretty much have to redo the setup from scratch again. Um, yeah, this is not also my normal lighting setup. I have a lot more of a fine-tuned one, but I'd like for you guys to be able to find your own settings instead of me just, you know, copying down everything for you. Um, you know, learning by yourself and learning the fundamentals of something rather than learning specific instances of it is a lot better um, to do for practice and anything really, especially with like game design stuff. So we have this now, this Charizard render here. I'm going to do pose one render green PNG. And so now if we go back to our desktop, we can see we've got these two Charizard renders. And if I swap between the colors, they are in the exact same spot. So that's how you get two renders in the same spot. But now you're like, oh, hey, if I put them in Photoshop, it doesn't show up right, right? Um, and there's a way to fix that. <laughs> so I'm going to go to Photoshop. All right, guys, when you have Photoshop open, what you're going to do is you're going to make a new document. It's going to be, um, I think it's 208, yeah, 208 by 160. And this is where you're going to see all your previews of your images. And what you can do is... Every time you see background is that, you're going to um, just double click it to get rid of the background layer. Um, so now you're going to make three more documents. One's going to be 128 by 160. Um, one's going to be 48 by 56. One's going to be 32 by 32. Uh, so now what you can do is in all of those, double click the background layers. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to right-click this background layer, convert to smart object, and then convert to linked. And we're going to name this linked layer uh, CSP. I think I'm on, am I on CSP or Stoggy? Yeah, I'm on CSP. So name it CSP. And once you have it named that, uh, double-click the layer and name it CSP as well, because we're going to drag it into the other document. So click Untitled 1 or whatever the um, preview layer you had here is. We're actually going to hide the first layer inside here. So every time you click one of these top things, you know, it shows you the layers. Since we've dragged this out, we can take this layer and drag it right into here. So now, I'll position this, and we have our CSP layer. So I can close that, and then our this we're going to right click, convert to smart object, and do it again to linked. What linked does is it makes an actual file that it references instead of just having a temporary one. And we're going to name this BP, and again we're going to take it. To Put it here, name it BP, move it next to this in the open area, close that. And then again, for the last one, the same thing, but it's going to be named stock, obviously. Convert to linked. Ignore that error message, so that's just me. Stock. Stock. And then we're going to drag this in here and put it there. So once you've got these three images now, we're going to open up. Uh, Charizard images. We'll close off this. Open up these two. Uh, so now the cool thing is, is I'm going to go ahead and save this main document to my thing as uh, previews or images. It doesn't really matter. Save it to your desktop as an actual document or wherever you're going to keep these. Um, so now if I click any of these linked files, it will actually open up that document for me, which is cool because we now can have quick templates for making images. So first we're going to make a new layer underneath Charizard, fill it with black. 
This is so that the bounds of the image are the same no matter what when you turn it into a linked document. So we're going to right click it, convert to smart object, uh, right click it again, convert to linked, and I'll name it uh, Zard. So now we're going to name this layer Zard. And here's where it gets cool. We're going to uh, first let's get the green chars over here. Uh, do Control A on his document, copy everything, and close that. And then back in the other Zard document thing here, uh, we're going to double click this really quick and open up a new one. You can see, um, and then click con uh, press Control Shift V. It will paste it exactly in the same spot where it was in the original document, so that the position is the exact same. So you can see when I unhide it here, it's, the positioning is the exact same. So we're going to save this and close it, and you can see it's now green in the other document automatically. Um, so back in here, we're going to open up all three of those other files, VP, stock, and the CSP, and each of those files we're going to drag this into. Uh, don't worry about the positioning right now, just drag it in. Uh, there we go. So once you have this all good, you can close that, you don't need to save it. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to open it up again, hide this, just have it so the normal Charizard showing, and then save it, and you can see in here it's already updated. So now I'm going to position these in all three of the uh, spots. So this is for a CSP, it's like a torso upward picture. I'll save and close that, so you position them there. Inside the uh, BP image, we're going to, and all these hide the white layer, you don't need that. It's just for, um, keep it though, it's just for positioning wise. We're going to have like his face, you know, bust because it's the battle portrait. Save that and close. And then for the stock, it's a little bit different. We're going to group this uh, file. We're going to uh, select all and then do select contract by two pixels and apply it at the canvas bounds. Let's make it so that uh, there's a little selection that's slightly smaller than the actual edges. We're going to make a mask of the image here. I don't like it. Um, and that will make it so that no matter where you put this, it doesn't show up at the edges. That's so we can add that little uh, pixelated border that all the stock icons have. So we can make him smaller now so that just his face is showing. And you're like, oh, how are we going to have it so that, you know, his face is showing, uh, but without the other parts of his body. What we're going to do is, we're going to position like that. We're going to click a mask. Um, and then we're going to blot out with a brush all the parts that aren't his head. You can see here, I'm doing that now. It doesn't have to be exact. These are stock images. Um, it can be more finesse with yours or whatever. So once you've got that good, um, in the group thing, do the FX button and add a stroke of one outside. they will add a little black effect layer, and you can save that, close it. So you can see on your previews image here, you've got all three of your preview images. They're all, you can see what they look like next to each other. And if you click one, it opens up that actual uh, document uh, to add more characters in. So you can see the way I have it formatted, you can add more characters in here. Um, and it works pretty easily. Um, if you want to save the stock image, uh, the correct way to usually do that is hit, do Shift, Control, Alt, S, and it'll open up the Save for Web. Then do PNG8 as your format. And then for the mat, set the mat to black. And that'll make it so that there's a black outline um, on the exact edge of the image. And then if you save all these, let's just call it. You know, pose one stock norm. I usually have a format for my names. So now when you save from this document, it automatically sizes. You can see here, uh, for these, don't have them with the matting or whatever, to save them in the normal format. Um, so you can see here, it always will save it in the exact cropping. Uh, so let's say I'll, I'll say I'll do it like pose one CSP norm. Um, if I open up the Zard document here and I want to get the green Zard instead, I can save this, close it, and bam, it's already in the exact position. So I can do pose one csp green and so now if i open up these images bam you have two of the exact same zard uh csp images that are exactly the same position so um i hope you guys liked the tutorial it's a little bit advanced compared to other stuff i've done i guess um but this is an easy way to have matching images and renders for anything that you do um that's pretty much all it is. So I hope you guys liked it. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, let me know inside the videos comment section. All right, see ya.